Okay, morning guys. Well, welcome back to the second week of the Guildford City Fitness live stream. So, I hope you all had a really good weekend. Uh, again, thanks to everyone who's been participating, doing the challenges over the course of the last few days while we've been gone. Just to clarify that over probably, yeah, on Friday, I'm gonna go through Saturday and Sunday's challenges. So I had a couple of messages about them over the weekend. So it just means that you've got a bit more clarity around what you need to address, what you need to get done. Um, over the Saturday, Sunday, in case you want to go out and do some other bits and pieces. Um, you got the email sent out yesterday with the program for the week. It's been a couple of little tweaks and changes, but mainly just you know, a little bit of time for performance squads and, and masters. And then for for Nays and anyone that's a bit younger and less experienced, we've kept the times the same, but we've just made the order a bit more sen sensible in terms of me being able to talk to you and you being able to transition from one exercise into the other. So beyond that, if you've got any questions, still just let me know and we can, we can uh, liven it up a bit, make sure that you've got everything you need to get going. So with that being said, we didn't get any requests for any more demonstrations, so we're gonna get straight into it so we can get training and then crack on with the day. So, starting off then, as usual, with a little bit of mobility and a little bit of a heart raise. So we're gonna go just one minute jogging on the spot, just because I'm outside and wanna get a bit warm myself before we start off with the, the mobility. So. Make sure you got your drink with you, and we're gonna get going in just under 10 seconds. Watch is all charged up. And again, if you ever got any comments or feedback to give us, just put them in the comments or send us a message after after the stream. So with jogging in the spot, we're gonna go in three, two, one, off you go. Again, it doesn't strictly have to be just jogging. It's a good opportunity to work on some other bits and pieces. While you're doing this, just make sure you get your heart rate up. If you had a skipping rope, I'd go with that. And relax there. One more round of that, and then we'll crack on. So a little break. Going again in three, two, one. Okay, just because you're warming up means it's a good chance for you to start organizing yourself. Make sure your posture's good. Start thinking about what you might want to focus on for your warm up. And two, one, stop there. So, to begin with, then we'll go bend the iron cross down on your back. Make sure you're exercising core control. So shoulders down, knees falling out to the side in two, one. Let's go. Let's maybe count down three seconds each side. Try and concentrate on which part of your lower back in the body it's stretching. Maybe time for a good four reps on each side. I'm counting down time, just so we can stay together and organize the session. But if you're doing it on your own, it's always maybe a little bit better, relax. Just to count it for reps, so you make sure that each one's as good as the last. So then we're gonna go angry cat, happy cat. Make sure you've got a nice uniform curve on your spine. Heading off in two, one, off we go. Again, to making sure guys that you breathe in as much as you can on the angry cat, cat part, and then breathing out, forcing all the air out of your chest, trying to get a really big squeeze and stretch. And the really hard bit, when you get a bit older, is making sure that it's always coming from your lower back as well, rather than just being another version of scat press. Relax. Into thread the needle. So again, elbows down, hips on feet, right hand on right ear, in two, one, off you go. So hopefully those that are new to this one are gonna start finding it just a little bit easier. Try and get up. 
all the way or at the very least you should be starting to feel it a lot more in your upper back rather than getting stuck and not being able to go anywhere okay and switch sides again try and make sure you can feel if there's any differences between them so you can work on that later on two one let's go Again, breathing out as you rotate up to the ceiling. Breathing out as you relax down. Just try. Try and get up as far as you can. Make sure you don't lean up to the side and lose all that. Uh, lose all the work you're meant to do with just your upper spine. Leave that there. We're going to go leg swings next one. So again, like we said before. Two, one, let's go. Low and slow to begin. Try and make sure you build it up gradually. Make sure that none of that range comes from you rounding your lower back so that you make sure you're warming up your hip flexors as well. Try and get a little bit more ballistic as you go through. Switch sides. You might find by doing that and holding your core, you don't get quite as far. That's fine as long as you make sure you're feeling it. And your hamstrings at the top there, and your hip flexors at the the back end of the swing. Okay, then side to side. Mm. Two, one, off you go. So again, low and slow with this one. Make sure you've got your posture held well. Engage your core. And the main thing with this, if you've got your hips facing in one direction, make sure they stay there as best you can. Rather than rotating through like that. Because you get nothing done in your adductor, which is what you want. Switch sides. Going two, one, let's go. probably find that even if you start low and slow and you don't feel anything going on, that you'll gain more and you'll warm up quicker by taking your time because your body will start to naturally relax into that range of motion. Leave that one there. Okay, we're going to go into walkouts. So two, one, off you go. Making sure you don't drop your core at the end of the range. So walk out, hold that press up plank position, go back. And if you can, try not to stand up in between so you've got constant, constant work being done by your hamstrings. This just relaxes you off and you go back to square one. One more. And Relax there. So a little bit of shoulder work. So we'll go scat press. Try and go off your knees. Good couple of repetitions. Leaving in three, two, one. Let's go. So again, make sure you hold your core. Really big push. Making sure as you go through, all that work comes from you pushing your hands forward rather than dropping your stomach and sinking down to the floor like this. Big active push, stretch up your mid back. Leave that there. Finish off the IYT and then one more little bit of pulse raise just before we start on the main body of the session. So, two, one. Let's go. So again, with, don't forget the W part. Reach into the streamline. Squeeze your elbows into your ribs. Add it to a Y. Make sure you've got full body alignment from head to hip. So again, from behind. 
big squeeze. Try and reach up with your shoulder blades. And also make sure that your wrist, your wrist doesn't go in front of your ear. Relax then. Let's sit back up. Maybe get a drink if you need it. We'll go one more time for a bit of a pulse raise in two, one, let's go. Back into jogging on the spot. Good opportunity just to do a couple of sprinty bits in there. Make sure your heart rate's up as high as it can be. Doesn't look to be very long, just try and get a couple of them in. Okay, last 10 seconds. Two, one, leave it there. So again, if you look at your drinks, I'm just gonna run through the program. There's nothing you don't know from last week. It's basically the exact same session. Just the order's been changed. So we're going to start with the short bridges to get the equipment bit out of the way and the rest of it's gone without. The other main change you'll notice is that you've got five sessions now instead of three. Reason being is that if you want to do uh, all the aerobic bits, and I know most of you are, so we thought we'd vary it up a little bit more so that again you're just using the same muscles in slightly different ways, trying to stop you from overtraining and fatiguing them out so that you don't get injured. So, so today's session is starting with a short bridge, so nice and close up to the chair, 90 degrees at hip and knee, hold at the top for the whole 35 seconds, added a bit of time so you can get a bit more work done, again as of about another minute and a half to each session of the week, but as you start to go through and get fitter and more progressively stronger, you've got, you'll gain more adaptation and that's ultimately what we want, what we want really. So then into up downs after the other side. So for those again, the ask for video demonstrations, holding your hips, going from press up plank into forearm plank, then you've got just regular squats. So full range of motion, hips down below knees, arms out for balance if you need it. Make sure you've got really good posture as you go down. And then into streamline crunch, so lower back. Push into the floor at the bottom. Oh, sorry. So rather than doing a full sit up, the crunch is going to stay here. Really small stomach. Try and keep your shoulders off the ground the whole time. So you've got constant tension on your core as you go through. Then to push ups. So again, if you need to get, do them on your knees, do. But normal stance, hands shoulder width apart. Go down as controlled as you can. Push yourself up. Make sure your elbows are pointing down towards your feet. Probably the main thing for most people to concentrate on and don't drop your core. Then rotation plank and burpee. So rotation plank, hand off. Try and go five seconds on one side into five on the other one. Nice and slow and controlled, pulling your stomach round to each side. And then burpee. Of course, I don't want to demo it, I'll save my, save my breath. Start streamlining, down. So you're really prioritizing that foot to hand into jump speed. So, it's about 10 past. We're going in 15 seconds. Oh, it's quarter past. Okay, so quick drink. Okay, so short bridge, 35 seconds on, 10 seconds off, in two, one, let's go. So the main thing to focus on here, all the work being done at your hip. If you start to struggle a little bit, just go even closer. You really can't get too close on the short bridge. Just so long as it's all hip, you should just have to feel your hamstring kick in at the end a little bit. Try and keep your elbows off the ground so you don't cheat by pushing up. 
close to the ceiling. Two, one, switch sides. Okay, 10 seconds off. Switching legs in two, one, off you go. So this one's at the start of the session, counts as a little bit of activation. So if you notice burpees at the end, every session's got a bit of a heart raiser at the end of each round. Just to make sure you're working as hard as you can in each one and focus on recovery in between. Okay, five seconds doesn't seem like a lot, but you should probably start to notice it by the end of each round. So just another five seconds to go. In two, one, there we go, leave that there. 10 seconds off, going into up downs. Okay, and in two, one, off you go. Again, more important that you concentrate on slow and controlled reps rather than rushing, swinging your hips wildly. If you really struggle, bring your hands together, spread your feet a little bit more, last little bit. Stopping in three, two, one, leave that one there, up onto your feet. So if you've got equipment, this is the chance to use it. Pull it out in front, squatting in two, one, here we go. So again, you can go all the way if you want. If you want to get really challenging, go out to halfway. Don't stand up all the way at the top. A little bit of knee bend. Start to burn up a little bit more. Stopping in, two, one, relax. And we're going to the streamline crunch. In three, two, one, let's go. And thanks again to everyone who voted on the uh, the challenge for the weekend. Hopefully you've all seen the baby shark ab attempt. As much as it felt more like a, a turtle on his back, it's trying to stand up again. So again, if you start to feel any work being done somewhere you don't want to, like your lower back, go into a normal crunch. Relax. Okay, then we're going push-ups. A bit of a punch and pair off there. So one core exercise into another one whilst holding your position in a push. Two, one, let's go. So it, it was a younger uh, age group that suggested the baby shark challenge. So if you guys want to suggest any challenge um, for either this coming weekend or the weekend after, see how Jordan's recovering, um, feel free to put your suggestions in and then we can do a vote. Try not to be too mean. One more. Ah, relax. Okay, so you've got two more left there. Rotation plank into burpee. 10 seconds off, make sure you're getting drinks in, guys. Leaving in two, one. Let's go. So again, if you're not sure, if you don't think it's working, working you hard enough, hold that position, hand off the floor, and then pull with your hips. So that little bit of pause just means that you know it's, you're creating rotation at your core rather than just swinging your hips. Relax there, into burpees. Two, one, let's go.
again, making sure that as you go down, hold your back position to press a plank, jump, swing your arms, get as much height as you can. And relax. So a two minute break. Again, any questions or comments, feed them in now so we can address them. Again, while you're doing these rests, make sure you try not to sit down. So it means that your heart rate recovery is going to be that little, bit, that little bit better. Be less of a shock when you do stand up to go again. What happened over the weekend? Can't really think if there's anything too exciting, really. Mm, no, not really. Well, I spent a lot of time playing with Imogen on, on Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, oh, house party. Yes. So, yeah. Obviously, a lot of people over the weekend downloaded house party. Doing a lot of trivia and games. There's a couple of websites now where you can log on and create virtual rooms. Play board games with your friends and whatnot. I know some of you lot have been doing FaceTime where you do the morning sessions, which is great. So, if you haven't seen it, maybe try have a look at Face. Uh, no. House party. It's great um, fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We had a, a sorry sports park. Like, uh, performance quiz the other night it was pretty fun um pretty embarrassing for some of the people but <laughs> i think that's part of the fun isn't it really yeah okay so make sure you've had your drinks guys 25 seconds left and we're we'll going to round two make sure you got your kit ready so it's not on the grass this time so 10 seconds left leg to begin with a short bridge in two, one, off you go. So again, just making sure your hips aren't twisting. Make sure both your toes are pointing up to the ceiling. A lot of people tend to try and do these with their feet flat on the side of the surface. But if you do that, the chair will move and you'll feel it more in your quads rather than your hips. Five seconds left on this one. Stopping in two, one. Leave it there. It's going to make it better if you can. If it's going to move, just do it against the wall. If you haven't got a bench, just do single leg bridge. Two, one, let's go. So a bit less range of motion. Should feel a little bit easier. Back end still. Just focusing on keeping your hips facing all the way up to the ceiling. Don't let them droop down to your hip bone. It has to sit in the middle of the line between your shoulder and your knee. The whole time through, if you look, if your foot's higher, there's more room for your hips to move. Last five seconds, guys, just hold on there. Stopping in, two, one, relax. Into up downs. And going in, two, one, let's go. So again, people that are struggling a little bit after round one, just hold a press up plank, maybe go for a march or do a march plank, so feet up, hold it for a few seconds on each side, just like that, and relax. Then we're going into push-ups, I'll keep my jacket. And going in, two, one, let's go. So again, if you need to, and you haven't got someone to hold a belt to do a full one like we showed you last week, on your knees, really focus on keeping your hips down, Fall to the floor as slow as you can. Push yourself up. So mechanically, it's about 60% lighter than doing it with your knees off. 
but maybe just make sure that you're working on your chest, your shoulders and your triceps in equal measure. You start to get better over time instead of doing rubbish ones where you just drop your stomach down. Relax there. Okay, then you get streamlined crunch. No, you don't, you've got up downs. No, I've even got that one, haven't I? Up downs into squats. Two, <laughs> one, let's go. So you're gonna focus on posture. The, ultimately, the exercise order. The main thing is that you're gonna walk all the way through so you're getting a good five and a half minutes of body weight work done. Keeps your heart rate up. Again, challenge again, you can go four seconds down. Two second hold. One second up. Straight into another drop down. Hold that there. Relax. And it's crunch. In two, one, let's go. Take a deep breath at the bottom. Breathe out as you come up to the top. Make sure you're streamlined. Wrists are behind your ears. Hold it rather than swinging yourself up and falling down under control. So pull with your abs. Hold that position, go down slowly, and then back up. Hold on, two, one, Ugh. relax there, and you've got rotation plank. So, two, one, let's go. Make sure again that on both sides, hips are square on to whichever direction you're facing so you don't leave anything behind, don't finish that rotation. Obviously, the longer you hold on the side, the more of a straight arm side plank it becomes. Okay, and relax. The burpees to finish. And again, if you're struggling with this, just get something to set you off from the bottom so it becomes a floor to jump. So, two, one, let's go. Get someone to set you off. Go. 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 Catch your breath if you need to. Go. Relax. You're two minutes off. One more round to go. Oh man. Tough that looks. But again, by just concentrating on being on the bottom and jumping, it becomes more concentric. You have more time to think about the setup for each one. The other slightly like to shoot off in different directions. Start throwing your stomach up rather than driving your foot down. So in terms of transfer, again, I hate doing specific bits because the only way to get better at skills is to do the actual skill. But a lot of people when they come off the blocks, that big push means that they're gonna drop the core, throw the stomach forward. So it's a good chance for you to practice having a drop from there into that kind of position, making sure that you hold a streamline. Okay, so about a minute left before we go on to round three. If you have any questions that you have, make sure they go in the comments. I'm just gonna make sure that I do the right exercises in the right order. So again, there's things you can do around these programs. If you let me know, um, either through my emails or through the pages, if you've got equipment, and this is a big part of this, I've had some questions about it already. If you have got equipment, 
and you want to challenge yourself some more, you can add, the, add them in. The reason that I'm not showing equipment in the videos we've decided is because the majority of people don't. So for example, you can do weighted bridges if you want to, um, just to add a bit more challenge. You can have books if you want, just a little bit of extra load to challenge your hips. When you squat, you can do the single leg. I don't think we've got any of those in there. But if you need the variations, go for it. Just let us know and we can make sure it works with the program. So last round, short bridge in two, one, off you go. So again, you really can't be too close. The only problem is if you start to feel it in your hamstring, nothing in your hips, go down to the ground, hold it from there. Makes it a bit easier on your hamstring. So last five seconds before we switch sides and relax. Okay, same with the right. Just make sure if you have to drop, you hold the same amount of time in each variation and go. So if you only manage 20 seconds on your left side here, make sure that when you go onto your right leg, match it. So you're keeping yourself symmetrical. Again, this leg, so it doesn't matter whether you're holding this position or it's down here, just make sure you don't cross them over. Hold it the whole time. Okay, last few seconds, hips up, and relax. Okay, and two up downs. So, three, two, one, let's go. So like we said before, start with the press up plank, so that if you can't keep doing ups and downs, you just treat it as though you're doing maybe 10 seconds of press up plank, 10 seconds of forearm, and finishing off with 10 seconds here. That five seconds or more you've got on this round this week sort of makes up for the transition time between them. Just make sure as you're working you feel it all around your hips and stomach. And relax. Okay, then we're going up downs into squats. Let's stand up. Two, one, let's go. Two second hold, up. You can change the stance width, go sumo if you want. All that's gonna change is more work for you done through your adductors and your groin. For some people that are a bit bigger, wider stance actually gives you more room. Pretty much if you go too narrow, you'll have to round Make room for your hips. Two, one, finish off there and up. Back down, going to streamline crunch. Two, one, and off we go. So, again, if you really want to challenge yourself, make sure you don't relax at the bottom of each rep. Hold this here. Again, for a lot of you, you'll probably be able to just go straight in the sky crunch. We're not doing it today deliberately because it's on a different part of the program during the week. Last one. Three, two, one, relax. So we have a 10 second break. I'm ready for push ups. And two, one, let's go. Again, if you've got the option, you want to do inclines, um, you have to off the program. But it tends to be a little bit more tricep dominant. But if you are fatiguing at the back end of it and you think you can't keep doing normal ones for three rounds, it's a good way to relax. Just to make sure that your technique looks 
everything looks like a really good push-up, but the variation just means you don't start to cheat and work muscles that you shouldn't be working. So then rotation plank. Two, one. Just gonna go a little bit quicker. I'm still making sure. Still making sure that it's not which you see on a lot of people. So it's always hand first, with hips to follow. And then relax there. Finish with burpees. So I'm gonna get down if you set me off again. So two, one, start. Go. 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 Breathe if you need to. Go. Uh, oh, last one. Go. Relax. So make sure you walk around. Stop the cool down now. Before you go straight into stretching. Catch your breath, make sure you get a drink. There you go. Let's start off with a quad stretch. In two, one, off you go. How many people are watching today? Uh, so far we've got 11. Morning guys. Sounds about the same as normal, but again, hope you're all doing well today. Had a great weekend. So it sounds. I think it's only one week till Easter, so I'm not sure if the 11 are uh, parents, whether it's college kids from, from the older squads. Mm -hmm. Again, key po points here, guys. Hold your core, you should feel like you're starting to have a bit of a plank. Keep your hips in line with your knees rather than just yanking on your ankle. Leave that there. So, I'm going to go with the sit and reach hamstring stretch today. Two, one. It's one leg at a time. But again, people tend to use this one a bit of a cop out. So, if you're going for it, Hand around your ankle until you feel a bit of tension in your hamstring. Keep leaning forward and keep your back straight. So a lot of people I'll see just sitting like this, saying they feel it more. But if you hold your posture, that might feel easy to begin with. And you'll slowly start to feel it stretch out evenly along both sides of your, of your hamstring from knee to hip. So it sides. See how they compare in two, one, go. Again, proud posture is the main thing to focus on here. So push your belly button forward, lift your shoulders back. Some people might feel if they point their toes, you get a little bit more of a stretch. Just make sure that it comes from the middle of the hamstring, not behind the knee. A nice simple way of changing the stretch you hit different parts of your hamstring in a different way relax hip stretch so i'm gonna go with the, the kneeling hinge two one let's go so again straight back me and toes pointing the same direction hands can go on the ground if you want just as long as you feel it again between knee and knee and hip so sort of like a kneeling RDL. Toes up if you don't quite feel it. And relax. Then you might feel it a bit more if you lean away. 
So as you do it, make sure that your body stays in the line. Switch sides. Um, I know again, like I said with the hamstring, people have got their own preferences for how they do these stretches. The main thing is that posture's gotta be king because you don't wanna work the wrong muscles in the wrong way. Otherwise, when things do go wrong, you won't know how to answer the questions. There we go, leave that one there. We do a bit of a standing hip stretch for the outside. It's the time. Yeah, we did. So, outside of your hips, right foot down, left foot across, push, oh, wrong way. So left foot across, push your hips over to the right. So you're just trying to get your shoulders off in one direction, your hips off in the other. The more you can get these hip bones away from the ankles, the more you should feel it just around the outside of your hip there. As long as you just make sure that from side on, you are in a straight line. You start to do this, you won't feel it as much. So graceful. Okay. So again, right foot down, left foot down, right foot across, push away. So especially those of you that have picked up a lot of running recently, your abductors, so those muscles around the side of your hip, are gonna start taking up a massive toll from holding your hip stable while you run. You might find you get a little bit of a stretch in the lower bit of your back there as well. Again, the main reason for that is like I said, all these muscle fibers around there are having to make sure that your hips stay in a great position whilst holding your posture while you hit the ground, which you don't ever get when you're swimming in the pool, except maybe when you push off for that small fraction. So, last stretch. Two, one. Yeah, I'm just doing this one because it's easier for me not to kneel. But if you want to feel it a bit more, if you put your left hand on the door, try and shut, get your left hip a little bit further away from your left hand, or your left shoulder, sorry. That's where it attaches onto your body. So your lats get nice and long. As much as we like that nice straight back posture, you can hold it and push your hips. For one thing, it's not gonna work. Two, one, and you just slump. Let all your body weight fall backwards. There's nothing for your lats. If you organize your body, and then shove them off the side deliberately. You feel it some more. And again, a bit of a squeeze, relax. It's almost like you're shrugging yourself up to the door. Those that have done them with me know what a hanging shrug is when you hang off a pull-up bar. Let your body weight relax, and then try and shrug yourself back up. The same thing, just shrug, squeeze your lats there, relax away, get some more range. And then chest stretch. Two, one. So just finish off the chest stretch. And I'm gonna look at today's challenge. So, again, remember with this one, split your stance, toes facing the same way as your hips. And start to slowly turn your chest away from your wrist. Switch sides. Again, in terms of feedback, if you are happy doing your own cool downs, we can cover a bit more advice so that it's not me covering the same stuff. But if you have your foam rollers and want to see more foam rolling tutorials, let us know. Leave that stretching bit there. So the challenges are exactly the same, guys, as what they were last week. So I'm going to remind you now that if you want to share your scores with us, go onto like Instagram or Twitter or whatever you're using with hashtag GTSC, hashtag a squad name and then hashtag responsibility, which again is today's one. So you've got in this order, very deliberately, five rounds, and each round has push-ups, pull-ups, and either a one kilometer run, or a one kilometer cycle, or one kilometer on a row machine. So you do your 10 push-ups, 10 pull-ups or inverted rows, and then one kilometer. So I think last week, some people did the 5K run and then did the reps descending. 
for the point is you're breaking the run up so that every kilometer can be as good as it can be. So it's your responsibility to make, to make sure that you're trying to hold those times as best you can. So you've got 10 push-ups, 10 pull-ups, 1K, 8, 8, 1K, 6, 6, 1, 4, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1K. So you finish on the one kilometer run, time yourself for the entire thing, including a rest you decide to put in the middle or need to take more likely, and then put all those times up. Let us know how you're getting on. It'd be really interesting for those that did it last week to see how much you've improved in a week just through practice and through making sure that you've done everything you can to keep the body in one piece. I think that's pretty much it for me today. If there's no other comments uh, on the stream. So again, thanks for joining us and from Everly Guildford City, have a great day.